So now we're moving from the southern uh, Manhattan up the west side. We've traveled down from Long Island City down the east side, and now we're traveling up the west side uh, to Midtown West. And some of the um, really interesting projects that are going on there. So why don't you both introduce yourselves and your organizations? <laughs> I'm Heidi Sadler. I'm with Mitchell Jurgel Architects. I'm an associate. I think earlier you met Jim Braddock. Um, mm -hmm. or, so we've been in the lab fit out uh, research institutions for, I've been doing it 17 years with Jim for way longer. But, so that's sort of my role here. And we're speaking about Mount Sinai's fit out on the, on the far west side. Mm -hmm. And I'm Matt Weir. I'm with, uh, I'm an executive vice president with Taconic Investment Partners. We're a New York City based and New York City focused uh, landlord developer operator. Yeah, so Matt, um, can you tell us, like you've had an evolution here, right? Um, you were one in of the- In this very room, yes. <laughs> you were one of the first developers to jump in and learned a lot and now, you know, you've, opening or developing a second facility. So tell us what you're doing. Yeah, so Taconic has two um, active life science developments in the city. Um, we actually have, uh, as far as you know, different groups developing, uh, we have the most under construction at the moment, um, as you can see from the slides, two projects that are within 10 blocks of each other, which is something that we're very um, excited about. They're very different but one thing in particular that, that we like is they're very complementary of each other, not only to the benefit of us and our partners, our investors, but also to the um, ecosystem as a whole. So I'll start with uh, the project on the right, uh, which is the Hudson Research Center. Taconic is developing that in partnership with Silverstein. Um, as Nancy alluded to, we sort of started our entree into life sciences back in 2016 when the New York Stem Cell Foundation came. Um, and they were looking for space to establish their headquarters, which they've now done, and we've even recently expanded them. From there, as we sort of started to learn all of the different elements that you're hearing about today, um, what the space needs are, what the unique um, challenges of that space are to tenants and, and tenants' needs, et cetera, we've, we've evolved and continue to uh, develop our investment thesis into this space. So. Um, that's uh, Hudson Research Center in a nutshell, and I'll come back to it in a second, but uh, our second project um, that we began construction on earlier this year, as Nancy alluded to, is 125 West End Avenue. This is 10 blocks north of HRC, and this one is 400,000 feet, purpose-built to be 100% um, lab space, and in that building, we're, we're really creating a cross-section of spaces to meet kind of every segment of the market from uh, partnering with an incubator, which you, you've just sort of heard some of the unique challenges um, of, what, of, of their operation and, and of course the very important services they provide. Uh, we're gonna be pre-building graduation space and then um, the building is well suited to bigger tenants as well. So we're trying to create um, a mix. So that's sort of the, the quick overview of, of our two projects. And if you wanna go to the next slide, um, I can talk briefly about, uh, about each of them a little bit more specifically. So I mentioned New York Stem Cell Foundation. Um, it's also home to Hybercell, which are the, uh, the images that you see in the middle there, their, their lab. And the focus at, at HRC is on pre-built spaces, plug and play for, for tenants. They range in size from sort of 15 to 20 uh, up to full floors of 32,000 feet. We're trying to create different um, size uh, ranges to, to meet you know, different segments of the market. But in either case, fully plug and play um, with, with really best in class infrastructure. Um, our latest deal was, as, as you just heard from, uh, from Glennis C16, who's more in the biomaterials, biomanufacturing space. And one of the things that we're focused on for both projects, and really all of our projects, is creating um, the best space solutions for tenants, no matter the industry. In this particular instance, it's about flexible spaces. So is a, a tenant coming in that's heavy chemistry, we can meet their, their needs. A tenant um, in biomaterials or biomanufacturing, we can meet their needs. And there's a lot of thought um, and time and investment that goes into creating the right infrastructure, the right layouts, um, et cetera, to be able to do that. 
Um, another thing that you've probably heard a, a whole lot about is, is that creation of community. So this building will have a number of amenities uh, where tenants can get together, where we can have conferences like this to, um, to again, bring, bring the, the larger ecosystem together. Um, 320,000 feet in total, and as you can see there, 175,000 feet of it will be lab. As Nancy sort of alluded to, um, that would have been tough for us to imagine only five years ago. I think that's representative of how quickly uh, the industry has evolved, and, and in particular, New York City. So that's uh, the Hudson Research Center, again, in partnership with, uh, with Silverstein. And then the second project, if you want to go to the next slide, um, this is our latest, really, really exciting, 125 West End Avenue. This is the former Disney ABC campus. Um, the primary building on that campus is 400,000 square feet. This is a total $600 million project that, again, is, is purpose-built from day one. Um, a lot of landlords in the city now are looking at optionality. I, I could be lab. I might be lab. This is, uh, from day one, was, was ready to go, and we've designed it with, uh, with, with those users in mind. Uh, this building also will have a, a suite of amenities that will serve our tenants, again, as well as the, the community at large, the ecosystem at large, roof decks, conference centers. So hopefully, Nancy, we can, we can have this event up there in a couple of years. <laughs> Look forward to it. Absolutely. Um, HRC, by the way, an another way that the, the projects complement each other, we're delivering our next, uh, our next floor um, in about two weeks. A C-16 will be moving in. So that space... That project is very near term, and we're super excited about that. As you can see here, 125 is uh, Q2 um, or Q3 2023. So we're, we're introducing space into the market, into a, into a growing market. Um, I mentioned earlier, our, our goal here is to create a suite, uh, a, a number of different spaces for different segments of the market, incubator operators, graduation tenants. And then the unique feature of this building, I believe it's the largest life science floor plate that is available and will be available in New York City. So 54,000 feet, um, really efficient floor plates for larger tenants. Also, it has a really unique loading capacity. The elevation changes around the building, so you can enter at grade at multiple levels, which uh, will appeal to diagnostic users or anyone in a biomanufacturing capacity. So really unique features. Um, highly amenitized, which again is, is so important. You can see sort of the, the roof deck that we're planning with views of the Hudson. And as we then step back, we look at, uh, again, the cluster there on the west side, our two projects combined with, um, with what Heidi's gonna talk about. You have uh, the Tish MS Center is there. You have um, other, other developers bringing space. So we're excited not only about what we're doing, but that the, um, the sort of subcluster is also developing around this. And as you've uh, read and heard about, there's already a very strong sort of pull uh, to the west side for life science tenants, and we're excited to add to that and to, uh, to continue investing in that area. Yeah, well, congratulations on all the progress. You know, when you, when you say, oh, it's just been five years, like, that seems like a long five years, right? <laughs> I, think we, I think we can all agree on that. Yes, the last five years have been. But, I mean, it's really not that long when you also consider that there was a year and a half of a pandemic in the middle of it. So, um, yeah, so that's come a long way uh, since we first looked at it for the New York Genome Center uh, 10, 15 years ago. So, um, kudos to you for bring, finally getting that building into life sciences. And um, now we're moving to um, Georgetown and the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, which is a very unique um, development uh, because it was a 165,000 square foot lease with Mount Sinai, um, largest life science lease signed in the city this year, first time a major academic institution has partnered with a private building owner uh, to put substantial research and clinical operations uh, in a building off of its campus. And that is really important because it is the first example of that in New York City. This happens in Boston all the time. Um, and so it's, it's kind of, you know, a stake in the ground here. And so we're really happy that we have Heidi St Sadler here to tell us all about what's going on in that building. Thank you. Can you hear me this time? Nope. No. Okay. 
Is it on? Try it now. Hello? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Um, I think I had some slides. So you'll recognize this building. Um, this is 787 11th Avenue, which happens to be right next door to the Hudson Research Center, which was a big pull to the area, I will say. The Mount Sinai researchers in moving to this location or being recruited to this location, they want a community. And knowing that the stem cell center was right next door was a big draw to this area. So if we go to the next slide. Um, again, the other draw to this area is that Mount Sinai um, took over Roosevelt Hospital several years ago. It is now Mount Sinai West, which is just a few blocks away from here. So there is an affinity to their hospital just nearby. And again, just to the left of 787 is the Taconics Hudson Research Center. So if we go to the next slide. Um, and hearkening back to some of the earlier comments on the, how industrial buildings are great for lab buildings um, and why the west side of Manhattan has so many of these and they are great buildings to do this type of fit out for. So this was originally a Packard auto plant um, and a car, they sold cars there, they maintained them there. So if we go to the next slide, you can see what's now left from it today. Georgetown did a great um, renovation six years ago now to convert it to office space. Um, they raised up the, the ceiling on the eighth floor, which is the photo on the right. On the photo, oh, actually, it is the right. <laughs> and the, and the other photo, you can see some of the, inf the typical infrastructure that you see with the mushroom capitals, the flat slab. Um, so that's just to get, it's great bones for, for doing a lab fit out. So just to give you an idea, if we go to the next slide of what Mount Sinai is putting here, um, as Nancy mentioned, it is a combination of clinical and research. And while this is groundbreaking in terms of a lease for research at this scale, Mount Sinai and a lot of the institutions in the city do have hospital components with a diverse clinical practices that they've been leasing all over the city for decades. So they, they are very sophisticated at leasing and fitting out space. It's just new that it is also a research component. Um, so on the Icon School of Medicine side, what they're putting in here is neuro research. It's a combination of both neurology and neuroscience labs. Um, to your typical microbiology labs, you know, wet bench, dry write-up area, and there is a dry lab component. I mean, I think that is something new that we're seeing, you know, maybe in the last 10 years. A dry lab is just exploding in terms of the amount of people that they need to fit out that for. Um, and then also, in order to support both the neuro research and to expand what they have going on the Upper East Side is some research cores are expanding in this location and some are, um, oh, they're, they're moving here completely. So there'll be a genomics core, a stem cell core, a mass spectrometry, CRISPR, um, the Drug Discovery Institute, um, a microscopy core, and cytometry. Also there will be a cancer research component which will be using the vivarium. So that's the last piece to both support the cancer research and the neurobehavioral research is there will be a small animal vivarium on site. And then the clinical component is um, outpatient breast and spine center with a affiliated imaging and also an ambulatory surgery center with four ORs. So just to see how that lays out in the building, if we go to the next slide. Um, this taking three floors, so the, the three um, floors that we're fitting out are 159 rentable square feet. The additional square feet Nancy mentioned is there's a lobby space. Um, total occupants, it is, you know, anchor tenant size. It's pretty large fit out. There's 254 people, 30 primary investigators, 169 lab benches, and the vivarium will accommodate um, 4,000 small animal cages. Um, and then what's not included in that 159 rentable square feet is the amount of infrastructure. So the infrastructure that was there um, was to support office fit out. So we definitely had to expand considerably to support um, the research components and also the sort of redundancy that you need. You, you, if you, when you have a vivarium, you can, nothing can go down. Right. So, um, so we actually have space on the roof and the cellar and on three other floors to support the uh, mechanical systems. Um, if we go to the, and the clinical floor you'll see is sort of sandwiched between the two research floors. And then also the ambulatory surgery center, there was that double height space I showed you, is taking advantage of that ceiling height to put the four ORs in. If we go to the next slide, um, just how this lays out on this large of a floor plate. Um, I don't think this isn't that different from a lot of incubator spaces as they're looking for flexibility. I mean, we have 30 specific investigators, but the lab is one large open lab. The biggest one I think seats 85. 
And the idea is, you know, different, different researchers can grow or they can shrink and the lab moves with them. Um, so that's on the east side, looking out over 11th Avenue. Um, we have re offices on the north and south, and then a vivarium in the center on the eighth floor. So to give an idea how, how it lays out. But it is a very big floor plate accommodating quite a few lab benches. And if we go to the next slide, um, this is just looking at it, you know, in a typical plan view. The different, the blue is the labs, purple is the lab support, um, and then the offices on the north and the south. And we go to the next slide. Um, just what it'll look like, three dimensions. Um, similar to a lot of those labs we've been looking at, these are all flexible benches um, that can pull away. If we go to the next slide. Looking at it in section, again, we have along the windows, taking advantage of all the daylight and the enormous windows you get in industrial type buildings, um, are the write-up desks, um, wet benches in the center. And then we are using a lot of glass on the project to showcase the science. So we, we you know, when you, as soon as you get off the elevator, if we go to the next slide, you can see right into the lab. And we are using a lot of glass to really, around most of the labs. And if we go to the next slide, I just put this in here. Um, is street presence, so there is a lobby, and some of that is about clinical patients, you know, having, being able to wayfind, but it's also about, you know, it's a marquee location for the Mount Sinai, so we're trying to create that street presence here. If we go to the next slide, just zooming in on Mount Sinai will have its own entrance, so. Terrific, and for those of you who want to know more about this transaction, um, the business side of it was actually fascinating, and we had a webinar on that earlier this year where we had the owners, the building owners, Georgetown, um, and the financial people who funded the build-out of this building, um, and some of the others that were involved in putting this transaction together, describing uh, the process that they went through, which was actually quite interesting so, um, and creative. So for those of you who want to know what it takes to actually convert a building like this into a life sciences center, that webinar would be um, worth looking at. So thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. And I'm so happy to see all the progress on the west side. Terrific. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thank you.